Hi, this is Elizabeth Hancock and welcome to my new show, The Great Awakening Podcast. This week, we're going to be looking at the Mer people who are interesting because they come up in every single cultural story, myths and legends. So I thought that we'd explore who they are in deeper detail. I talk more about the Mer people in my new book, which has just come out on Amazon. It's called Human Origins, the Multiverse and Our Star Ancestry. And I talk about all sorts of these hidden mysteries in our world to understand more about who we are as a species, what we're doing here, and where we're heading next. So who are the mer people? Why do tales of mermaids and mermen come up in all of our cultures? Who are the Nomo, an amphibian species who've been visiting the Dogon tribe in Mali for centuries? Why were people in Assyria prohibited from eating fish a thousand years ago? Why do Sumerian texts say that the god Enki lives in a cube at the bottom of the ocean? Why did giant mermen and 10 feet tall live in Lake Bakal in Russia? And why do the helper gods or seven sages that helped kickstart humanity after the Great Flood turn up in boats from the ocean? Well, all these questions and more will be answered in today's episode. Tales of mermaids and mermen have existed for millennia, and yet we have never seen proof of them. There are many videos on YouTube, but most are unconvincing, and yet our myths and legends are full of them. So let's look at the evidence and look at the first recorded record of fish people. The earliest record of fish people goes back to 5000 BCE in Babylonia, which is the beginning of our modern civilization. We've got Dagon, a god of the Philistines in ancient Syria, who's depicted with a fish tail. We've also got in Mesopotamian mythology, Oannes, who is an amphibious being who lived in water and taught mankind wisdom. We've also got the Egyptian goddess Isis, who sometimes is depicted as being green with webbed hands and feet, while Osiris, her brother, is shown with green or blue skin. In the Mesopotamian texts, we have the Apkolu, or the Seven Sages, who are demigods created by the Sumerian god Ea, or Enki, who are also depicted as half human and half fish. We also have the sea god Ea, who is Poseidon in Greek mythology, was also shown as a half man and a half fish. Although I suspect that many of these fish references refer to spiritual growth and enlightenment, there are just too many tales of mer people in our world. And according to Assyrian legends, we even used to marry them, which is no doubt the basis for the prohibition around eating fish, which still pervades in Syria today. Tales of mermaids and mermen come up in every culture, even unrelated ones, merfolk from Korea, and others from China, Japan, Ireland, Scotland, and many parts of Europe, where these beings are called. The merrow are shown as having webbed hands and wear a red cap so they can breathe underwater, indicating that they don't have gills and are using advanced technology to breathe underwater. If we look at folklore, We've got the descendants of the now extinct Mexican Iritilla Indians who say that they were once half human and half fish. And then we also have the mermaid-like water spirits, the Mamiwata people, who are said to abduct people from land and take them to an underwater base where they become part of a breeding program. A girl in Africa tells her story of being abducted and taken to the bottom of the ocean where she stayed for three years, forced to breed. After three years, she was released and left back on the same beach where she'd been taken from three years earlier. We've also got the Nomo and the Dogon tribe. The Dogon tribe were discovered in Africa in 1930s by anthropologists. The tribal members say they've been visited for hundreds of years by a group of extraterrestrial beings called the Nomo, who they describe as amphibian-like people with green skin. They've been honoring these Nomo for a very long time, as can be evidenced by the many ritual masks they have hanging in their tents. They change the style every 60 years, and there are many of them. They describe the Nomo as fish, snake, or serpent-like humanoid, with a forked tongue, no ears, red eyes, horns, and an elongated skull, and they were hairless. The Nomo told the Dogon tribe that they came from the star system of Sirius B, but the existence of Sirius B wasn't scientifically confirmed until 1970. Tribal members also mentioned that there's a third star, which is Sirius C, which hasn't been discovered yet. However, orbital irregularities do suggest that there may be another star in what is still officially regarded as a binary star system. 
They came here because their planet was dying and they required a water planet to live on. They could apparently walk using their fishtail or slide, but also appeared to use a device to move around on. This vehicle was described as being able to scorch the ground and affect the crops, which showed it was some sort of machinery or advanced technology. They could live on land for weeks as long as they stayed moist and preferred cool caves or high mountains to live on, demonstrating that they could live in the water and on land. They apparently added their DNA to a mammal and created the human race as a physical vessel to house their consciousness and preserve their DNA. We've also got the Sasquatch, who according to channeled messages from the Sasquatch elder Camus, the first people were the fish or mer people who were a hybrid half amphibian and half human species seeded here by an Andromedan aquatic species to help preserve their genetic memory through their DNA. This goes back millions of years and there have been many different species since then. Apparently they still live here and have been helping humanity at various points in history teaching us arts, sciences and technology, as well as helping during the many wipeout scenarios we've had. These underwater civilizations are now highly advanced and even have spacecraft. In fact, we often see spacecraft coming out of the ocean and zipping off into invisibility, meaning it went off into another dimension. And they even have cities under the oceans, one of which is said to be made up of three large domes connected by tubes under the area known as the Bermuda Triangle. The Bermuda Triangle is said to be a portal linking that part of the Earth to another dimension. So maybe these people live in another dimension to us and is why we can't see them here. Interestingly, the Sasquatch is also reported to be a transdimensional species, which is the reason why we haven't caught them yet either. That would certainly explain many of the strange myths and phenomena in our world. But it's not just ancient reports of mer people. There have been modern interactions too. Because of the declassification of the Russian Navy encounters, we know of reports from 1982 describing how some of their trainee soldiers were actually killed after trying to capture a group of 10 foot tall amphibian type beings about 165 feet down in Lake Bakal in Russia. The beings used very advanced solar technology to avoid capture, which unfortunately resulted in the soldiers reaching the surface too quickly, after which they died from the bends. Interestingly, the beings were shown as wearing caps, again showing the use of advanced technology and far more advanced than ours. Lake Bakal is the oldest and deepest lake in the world, so what else could be living there without our knowledge? Atlantis was said to be a mythical island that was destroyed in the Great Flood of 9600 BC. Plato was the first person to have talked about it, but since then there have been 20,000 books written on the subject, including Edgar Cayce, who channeled and downloaded thousands of messages and information about Atlantis. He has given us a far broader view of this lost continent today, and we can understand more about who these people were, what they were doing, and why they were so advanced. And of course, what happened to them when the continent was lost under the ocean in the Great Flood. Many researchers believe that Atlantis was filled with different species from other planets and was largely set up by the Anunnaki, who are the sky gods from the Sumerian texts. They came here and set up civilization. There's also a theory that as they were proficient geneticists, they're responsible for creating the human race and all the mythical creatures that exist in our myths and legends too. If this is the case, then maybe one of their genetic creations was the mermaid as well. However, I suspect that the mer people are a species in their own right, and we seem to have inherited much of their DNA and love of water, leading to the aquatic ape theory today. The aquatic ape hythop the aquatic ape theory was to try and account for their, the lack of hair on our bodies, our descended larynx, our ability to voluntarily control our breathing, and our diving reflex, and our diving reflex which allows us to tolerate a lower level of oxygen in our bloodstream under the water. The theory essentially says that part of our evolution from an ape had us walking into the sea, where we continued to evolve, picked up tons of sea mammal traits, and then carried on evolving on the land. As unbelievable as this theory sounds, there are serious people in the science communities who consider this a plausible theory for the huge amount of similarities we have to sea mammals. For example, the size of our brains are more akin to marine mammals than land animals. We mate face to face, which land animals don't do. We hear better underwater because the range of frequencies that we can detect increases from 20 hertz to 200 hertz. We also have a safer time giving birth in the water. And humans are one of only three species to live well beyond the menopause. The other two are the pilot whale and the orca. 
both marine mammals. If we have indeed evolved from a sea mammal, it also explains the fact that babies can swim before they can walk and that our bodies are more suited to swimming than walking on two legs. Of course, it may simply be that we contain DNA from an amphibian creature, maybe even the Numu, if their story of creating the human race is true. So to conclude, from my research, I suspect that there are many different species, entities and beings living all over this planet, under the ocean, in the mountains, inside the earth, and maybe even other dimensions. Our teaching has been so limited and disjointed that we've stopped seeing the big picture and joining up the dots. There have been ETs, entities, beings, mer people, and more talked about everywhere because our planet was very different to how we've been taught it is. History has obviously been altered. Even in the past 50 years, when you look at books, history books from 50 years ago, it's very different to what they look like now. And I've never understood how history can change in that way. It either happened or it didn't. We also have UFOs and technology, which has been suppressed since the 1940s when we had spacecraft that crashed on our planet. Since then, these technologies have been used by the deep state. The people who live under the earth, known as the subterranean cultures, have focused on creating positive technologies for centuries while we created weapons. As such, the inner earth societies live far longer than we do, have no disease, and use crystal technology to benefit and build their world. The three dome-shaped buildings located under the Bermuda Triangle show an advanced civilization of people that may be mer people or may be an advanced species that chose to leave the surface wars on our planet and find somewhere safer to live, just like the inner earth people did thousands of years ago. Either way, it shows a far bigger reality on this planet than we've been led to believe. So what are your thoughts on mer people? And what do they say in your cultural stories about fish people or mer people? Do you have any stories in your culture? If so, I'd love to know. I love researching these hidden mysteries of our planet. So let me know in the comments below. Okay, take care for now. And I look forward to catching up with you next week when we're going to be moving into a two-part episode all about the lost empire of Tartaria. All right, take care for now. Bye.